I've shared this before, but uh, I'm going to share it again. God brought it up to me again, so I'll share it. I, um, <clears throat> I was really young in the Lord, and uh, this, this is the memory uh, God brought to me. I was really young in the Lord, and uh, um, God used to talk to me real sarcastically because I was sarcastic, you know, and God will talk to you in your language, amen? <clears throat> and so God wasn't sarcastic, but that was my language. And uh, uh, I, was, I had just graduated college, or was right around that time, and the Lord had told me to move to South Florida. And uh, I just immediately said, yes, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do what you called me to do. Then later I wanted to renegotiate the terms, you know? Like, I didn't realize then that, like, people say, I just told God, as long as I never have to worry about money, I'll do whatever, you know? And I'm like, ah, I got to remember that. Like, like I got to remember those conditions, right? <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I didn't give them any condition. I said yes. And so later I started getting smart with them. And, um, and I was like, what am I supposed to do when I get to South Florida? Like, I don't. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I was going to help start a church, but I didn't know what I was supposed to do for a living. And I didn't know. I was like, well, you know, I was making breakfast, right? And I was getting ready. I was getting ready to make some cereal. And I was opening the box. And I said, that's how I make breakfast. I still eat cereal for breakfast every day. And so I was making breakfast, getting ready to open cereal. It might have been the middle of the day. I was a college student. Who knows? And so I was like, but God, you know, like, uh, yeah, I'll do whatever you want, but like, how am I supposed to eat, right? And then I opened the cereal box and it said, congratulations, you won two years free cereal. <laughs> two years worth of free cereal. <laughs> I was like, touche, God. <laughs> touche. <Wow>. And, uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, and so I was like, all right then, two years. Can you imagine what that is? And so I, I cut it out. I mailed it off. I mailed it off. And they mail back, like, these large cases of cereal. They're like, you get it all at once, right? And so it was like, a, like these huge boxes of cereal showed up at my mom's house because I moved in with her. I'm like, what the heck? Actually, I think I got it when I was still in Gainesville. And so I, um, I had it, and I, like, stuffed all the cabinets with cereal. And uh, I got married, like, a year, year and a half later. And, like, when we got married, I moved in all my clothes and half my cereal. I still had it. I had boxes of cereal. <laughs> Got a ton of cereal. Every kind, like all different types of from, I think it was General Mills, but I could be wrong. Like just all kinds of cereal. And, uh, you know, we have been broke, beyond broke, but we've always had money to do what God has told us to do. We've never lacked money to do what God has told us to do. And it was funny because I was talking to a, a church planner recently, and, um, and I, I've never, never really had money in my life. Uh, and, <clears throat> and, you know, so I was you know, a little nervous about the whole money thing. And a um, uh, church planner I was talking to, he's like, yeah, you know, there's times after we planted, we were just eating beans and rice for a week. You know how it is. I'm like, nope, actually, I've never experienced that. I don't know. Since we've planted, we've never been broke. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, we've always had money to do what God has called us to do. Right? I remember uh, one time a friend of mine, um, uh, we were actually, when we started Sunday services, um, a friend of mine had a very large donation happen to his church. And, uh, <clears throat> and I said, I forget what I said to him about, you know, we're going to start Sunday morning service. He goes, oh man, I want to sew into that. And he wrote us a check for like 20% of the really big offering for them or 10% or something like that. And he gave it to the church. And so we went to pay our first month's rent and we completely emptied our checking account. We had like $3 left in our checking account. If we hadn't gotten that check from him, we wouldn't have had money for our, our first Rent check and start. We've always had money for anything God has ever told us to do. So, yeah, amen. So, like, this church is living in the testimony that I encountered, right? So, amen. So, yeah, cereal. If not, and all else fails, eat cereal, right? Cereal, man. Following Jesus. Uh, I have a handout I want to give. Um, have, have, have I, um, I'm going to starting now. What I want to do is I want to give three weeks. I want to talk about the burning room why we do this and what we're trying to accomplish. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk about why we're doing this and what we're trying to accomplish. That's two sheets, and uh, my daughter will hand out, or she'll, she and somebody else will help hand those out. There's two, there are two sheets. Yeah, Chelsea will help. They're already collated, yeah. So <clears throat> we, uh, when we started Revival Life Church, uh, as, uh, when we moved to Sunday mornings, now listen, I'm going to give you these, and they're just Bible verses, all right? So you don't have to start reading it. You can pay attention, all right? We good? I'm not going to have to make you do them face down or anything, right? You can. Well, the teachers laugh. Okay. So, um, 
So when we started Revival Life Church, we moved to Sunday morning meetings. Um, we set up in a cafeteria uh, of an elementary school. And uh, we, we um, were able to meet on Friday nights to start set up. So we were a young church. We had young people. So nobody had any kids. Uh, so a lot of young people, instead of going out, they, we, they would come and help set up on Friday nights. That was kind of like part of the sanctification process. Uh, they got saved, and instead of partying on Friday night, they would come help set up. And uh, at the end of setup, I was like, hey, let's just pray for a second for Sunday morning service, right? Because I was never sure anybody was ever going to come, right? And so I had a nervousness more than anything. They're already collated. Just give them two sheets. Just everybody got them? There's one or two, right? So, uh, uh, so we would have like a Friday night uh, prayer meeting real quick. we just pray for the Sunday morning service. And then like the anointing would come. So we would pray a little bit longer at times, and, and uh, soon we had like a band, right? Like Friday night setup would happen, the band would come, and the band would play, and we'd have intercession, and we'd have worship, and Holy Spirit would move, and the Spirit of Christ would touch people, and then we'd have like people, uh, you know, preach a little bit, and, and we had activation of gifts, and people started coming just for the Friday night meeting, and uh, it was really, really an amazing time of encounter with the Lord. It was an amazing time of Holy Spirit activation, and uh and we called it intercession, and uh, we, there were times of us praying on the mic in direction, but there was more. We really felt like our intercession was we want to be a conduit of Holy Spirit on the earth. We wanted, like, if Holy Spirit is going to establish the kingdom, he's going to have to start taking some ground, and the ground that he can start taking is us. Amen. Right? That was, that, that was what we were doing. We were surrendering our will to Holy Spirit and saying, you can, you can, you can start right here in, in your invasion of the earth. You can start right here, right? And so we would just yield the Holy Spirit, and we'd do whatever he wanted to do. And uh, those meetings normally had to end at 9, uh, because the custodians um, uh, would have to lock up the whole place. And so we'd like have to carry people out or we'd have to kick people out and like, hurry up, you got to get out. Remember, like we, we did that for, for, for a long time. And uh, did any more copies? Is that what happened? I didn't make enough copies? I'm sorry. Well, I guess it's a good sign, right? I thought I made too many. So, <clears throat> so we just continue these Friday night meetings just because it's what we did. Like it was good. But after a while, we were like, why are we, do, what, what's the point of these meetings? What, what, why? And I'm the kind of guy, uh, I want to know, I want to do things for a reason. I never want to do anything because that's what we do. I don't want to do anything just because of tradition. I don't want to do anything just because that's what people expect. I want to I have a purpose behind it. And uh, when, we, when we surrendered our offices because we felt like we were supposed to give them up, uh, we didn't have a Friday night intercession anymore. And, uh, and, and after a while, like at first we were pretty happy. Uh, because we had our Friday nights back, which was pretty neat. Uh, but then it started to feel like we were missing something. And so we started the Friday night prayer meeting in my house, which was good and awful because I had a ton of people in my house on a Friday night and all up on my lawn and, you know, just filling my house with 40-some people. And my house isn't that big. Uh, but it was, it was rich again, but, but I had no grace for that. And uh, so I just said basically, hey, if we're going to continue this, y'all need to pray in a building because I'm not doing this anymore in my house. And in a couple of months, we got this building. Uh, uh, no, no, wait a minute, not yet. We were at the school right after that. We got our, um, started meeting at the school because the Lord had told me that our Friday night intercession was important. All we knew was, in, internally, we knew it was important. Uh, and I didn't have a vision for Friday night. I didn't know what we were supposed to do about Friday night, but the Lord had told me it was important. And since I didn't have a vision for it, I put Corey in charge of it. Uh, Corey's a licensed minister, and so Corey had a heart for intercession. He had a heart for worship, so I put Corey in charge of it. He's a good leader, and uh, Corey really kind of whipped it in shape. He put some structure in it, but he never got a vision for it. He kept telling me, the only thing I'm getting a vision for is the worship, <clears throat> the music, which makes sense. That's what he's in charge of, and so he and Kellyanne were uh, kind of just really building uh, our Friday night intercession into something more than just what I had it doing, which was just, you know, whoever shows up shows up and whatever we do we do like they really put some administration behind it which was great uh, and then the Lord began talking to me about how I need to come with a fresh vision for Friday night this isn't something that can pass off I need to seek the Lord and figure out what it is we're supposed to be doing right and so I went to the Lord in prayer and I said Lord are we supposed to be doing Friday night meetings are we supposed to kill it off is it important uh, and, and what are we supposed to be accomplishing on these meetings and uh, I, I don't know if, if I told this story here or not, but I was riding my bike uh, because that's where I hear the Lord. The, well, that's where I get the clearest thoughts. I get more God visions, more God strategic plans riding my bike than anywhere. Somewhere about 45 minutes into my exercise, I began to really experience the Lord, which is 
I don't know how to explain it, but that's just what happens. So I'm riding, um, I'm actually riding west on Yamato, right? Cruising along, talking to Jesus. Is this important? What am I supposed to be doing? And just as I'm riding, three geese came and flew in, put me in formation with them. Now, <clears throat> there was like, it was one, two, three, and then me. And, and, and the third geese, goose was about, I'm riding like this. It's about right here. Like, its wings are almost hitting me. And they're honking. So I know they're, they're geese, right? That's what they do. And so as I'm, as I'm riding my bike, and like, I'm riding and I'm looking at them like, this is happening, right? Like, they're just right there. <clears throat> and then two things happened almost immediately in my mind. The first thing, um, early Celtic Christians uh, called Holy Spirit a wild goose, right? They called him the wild goose. Uh, and, and, and this is where the, a wild goose chase comes from. You try to follow Holy Spirit, it's like a wild goose chase. You have no idea where you're going. That's where the saying comes from. And so that was the first thing that occurred to me, that and the early uh, Celtic Christians, they called uh, Holy Spirit the wild goose. And, um, and the next thing, all of a sudden, I just, I just saw these three geese. It was Father, Son, Holy Spirit, me. I was like, okay, okay. And this was me. I had just asked him about this meeting. I asked him about this meeting. What do we do about this meeting? The geese came. Holy Spirit started talking to me. But, but it wasn't like they just came. It was like, I'm looking at them. There they are. We're flying in formation, me and the geese. Look at this. <laughs> right? It was, it was like that. <clears throat> and so I knew that the, this meeting was important. I knew it was to continue. And I also knew that there was more to the story that I didn't have yet. I didn't know what it was yet. And um, as it turns out, I started my master's program. And, and the Lord started talking to me through my master's program about uh, my role of leadership in certain ministries and how I cannot give other people... Um, the responsibility for coming up with a vision, I need to do that. Right? And this is what the Lord was talking to me about. Like, I want to raise people up. I want to give people opportunity. I want to encourage people. I want to hear what's inside them. And the Lord's like, you can't outsource vision. Like, like I've set you in place. If you're not going to do it, now, he didn't say this to me, but then why would he have me in place if he was going to have somebody give the vision? And so, Corey, uh, to, his, to, his, um, to his credit, didn't come up with a vision on his own. Right? He said, I don't have a vision for this meeting. Why? Because I'm the only one who can get a vision. Corey could have manufactured a vision. I'm the only one who can get one from God because it has to be part of the vision for this house. I can't outsource that, right? And so as I began meditating on that truth, the Lord brought me back to the vision of the geese. And he said, that's, that's, the, that's the second message in the geese. Number one was that the meeting was important. The second message was it was my role to line up the church with where God was going. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so um, I say that partially to get you to expect God to do supernatural things like that in his communication with you. Amen? And if you look for him to talk to you this way, he actually does. And it's, it's pretty wild, right? <clears throat> it's, an ex it's an exciting life, right? <clears throat> and uh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <clears throat> hallelujah. 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 I'm just going to let that bake a little bit. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> hallelujah. 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 And so I went to the Lord and uh, <clears throat> I asked him, uh, I, I began to do a search of scripture and I decided that we were gonna, I was going to just go through the word to find out just that he would lead me through the word and what we're supposed to do here, right? And so I, um, I put together virtually every scripture I could find on prayer or communication with God or, or intercession in worship in the New Testament. I limited it to the New Covenant because that's the covenant that I'm in. <clears throat> and so I, um, um, there's great stuff in that other covenant. It's just not my covenant. This is my covenant, the New Covenant. I'm not going to go into that too deeply. Amen. This is my covenant. And so I asked the Lord to speak to me in my covenant. And so <clears throat> I put all these scriptures together. I had a whole lot of Bible. And I just began praying through these. And I sent them to uh, Corey and to Kellyanne as the leaders of um, this burning room. Wow, I'm feeling the presence of God pretty good right now. Hallelujah. 
Uh, and so I um, asked him, hey, uh, I narrowed it down to a couple pages. I think it was two or three pages at that point. And I said, hey, I'm, these are what I'm praying through. I'm trying to hear God and where we're going as a ministry with the burning room. Like, what is, what is our, like, I know now we're supposed to have it, right? And I wasn't looking in Scripture if there should be prayer, because that's really clear in Scripture. They're supposed to have prayer, right? Like, that's settled, right? And I, and I wasn't praying if we should have worship, because I also believe that is settled, right? Even in the New Covenant, prayer in, in worship is, is pretty clear. Amen? Yes. Okay. So we didn't, we wasn't look, I wasn't looking for if, I was looking for what. I was looking for divine guidance with the Scripture. And as I prayed through the Scripture, I started eliminating ones I didn't feel like, I can't tell you any other than that I didn't feel like we're for this, uh, and weren't prescriptive in what we were supposed to do. And so as I just began to whittle them down, I had a list that I felt like uh, this, these were the scriptures I was supposed to pray. And so after I got together these uh, scriptures, I prayed through them for several days. I would just, morning, noon, and night, I would kind of just go through them, pray, read, pray, just kind of ingest them, you know, send them back to God and kind of just, just hear what he's saying. And, <clears throat> and then as I began to look at them, I saw that there, was th- there were really three groupings to these scriptures. And I started kind of grouping them into three groups that you see now in this paper. Uh, how to pray, what to pray, and what to expect. And so after I, I um, listed these three groups of scripture, are you guys okay with this? You, do, you going good? Are you doing good? Okay. After I uh, grouped these three groupings of scripture, I then did a real uh, study uh, on these scriptures. I didn't just assume that I knew what they meant. I actually did uh, uh, academic research on what's going on in these scriptures. And so I want to talk um, for the next maybe 15, 20 minutes about the first group, how to pray. Amen? Amen. That's what we're going to talk about right now. First scripture was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Acts one fourteen. It says, <clears throat> These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his Brother, so we see uh, that these um, the disciples uh, they were devoted to prayer, right? We know that they were together in one place with prayer. Acts two one, when the day of Pentecost come had come, they were together in one place. So we see again they were devoted to prayer and they were together. We see this unity of prayer that happens. Romans one Romans twelve twelve says rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted. To prayer, you see that. So, we see before sending the Holy Spirit, they were all in one mind and one accord. Before the Spirit came, and again we see them in one place when the Holy Spirit came. Uh, in Romans twelve twelve it says they were rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, rejoicing in hope, rejoicing in hope. That's that's an activity that I, I, don't, I haven't felt, ex, I've really experienced in a prayer meeting. I don't know about you, but rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. And this devotion to prayer, I feel, uh, is what we have been all along, unknowing that we have been following Holy Spirit the whole time. Holy Spirit has been leading us to have these prayer meetings. He put it heavy on our heart that, to continue them and to, and to contend and to persevere even in the hard times. And, and uh, this is a devotion. He's, I believe he's looking for our house. He's looking for a devotion to prayer that even if we're not seeing the fruit, of we're going to stay devoted in the place of prayer. Like there is stuff happening even if you don't see it happening. There has to be, there's people who have to believe that my prayer actually is accomplishing something even if I don't see it right now. I, um, I, I believe, <clears throat> um, I, 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 unfortunately, I think many churches are in decline um, and um, many people lose hope uh, because um, families don't stay still long enough to see the long-term benefit of prayer. There's so many people who, um, uh, there's so many people who are prospering in this life because their parents were so committed to Jesus. And they didn't teach their kids, listen, right now, we're not seeing the breakthrough. But when you're 20 and 30 and 40, and you see your life going really well, I want you to know that that is because of the intercession I've been doing on my knees for you for years. Wow. Right? Like we, like, but we need, that, we need to not restart that every generation. 
if we can get them multi-generationally, right? If we can tell our kids, yes, I know it looks like things are hard now, but I am breaking generational curses. And you'll see you won't have to walk in these things. You'll actually have prosperity in your life that I didn't have because of what I'm doing, right? Like this is real to me. This is real to me, right? Like this is like, I believe this firmly. I don't know that I'll ever come into fully what God has shown me, uh, but I absolutely believe my children will, right? And that's real to me. I really believe that they are going to walk in things that God has called me to because of my my intercession, because of my devotion to Christ, because of my giving, because of my love, because of my sacrifice. I absolutely believe they're going to walk into something. And And I just, I see other people who had godly parents, godly grandparents walking in something and not recognizing it's because of what their parents and grandparents did because maybe it wasn't actually taught to them like I have been devoted to prayer and God is faithful amen Amen? God is faithful see 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 how you're excited right there that's rejoicing in hope see that's rejoicing in hope right I'm not rejoicing in where I'm at right now but I am rejoicing in the hope that I know God will come through does that make sense I because now now what happens is when you do that now you're dragging it into the present Right? By faith, you're dragging that into the present. I'm rejoicing in hope right now. Hope is real. I mean, this is real to me. Like, this is real to me. Right? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're 36. We're doing all right? Okay. Hallelujah. You feeling good? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Is that what it is? Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you feeling good? It says, what is the outcome then? <clears throat> now, this is how to pray, right? This is all prescriptive on how to pray. What is the outcome then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with my mind also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with my mind also. Now, as you study this scripture, there are equal number of uh, authorities or scholars who believe that singing in the Spirit is with the uh, Holy Spirit, and others uh, believe that it's with the human spirit, right? And so as we study this, you could say, well, when they're talking about in the spirit, they're talking about, you know, uh, with all your heart or, or something. But, but if you, if you, if you study this, um, there, he's doing a contrast there. The author is doing a contrast in the, in the, in the natural and in the spirit, in the natural and in the spirit. That means when I'm doing it in the spirit, it has to be different than in the natural, right? So literally I will pray with intelligible and unintelligible tongues. I will pray with my understanding and I will pray things I don't understand in the spirit. And the Lord has shown that we have to give a place of praying in the spirit. There has to be a place of singing in the spirit, which really reflects back to when we said we will yield the Holy Spirit and we will be a place where we will allow him to make intercession through us. What does it mean to be yielded to the Spirit and you're actually praying things you don't understand? Right? Because we're addicted to understanding. We're addicted to certainty. We're absolutely addicted to certainty in America and in the West in general. And what does it mean to say, I don't understand what's happening, but I will do it anyways. I will absolutely yield the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to pray in tongues for the next 45 minutes. I'm going to allow Holy Spirit to make intercession on the earth through me. Right. And what I've challenged our worship team and what I believe we're going to be seeing more is we we see a lot of um, praying with our spirit where we begin to pray our heart to God. And we pour out our heart in, in prayer and in song and we just give yield to our heart. What I'm really looking for our singers to do is then I want to hear the song of the Lord over us through them. Right. So I feel like we have really good communication going that way. I want to see the Spirit begin to talk this way through us. Does that make sense? I want to see it coming back through. And I don't, I don't, I'm, in those of you who know me, I'm not looking for people declaring things that aren't the Lord. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not impressed uh, by, by great swelling words that we call prophecy. Right? I'm just not, I'm not looking for super apostles like Paul said. I'm not a super apostle like those guys, right? Like, and we don't even know who those guys are, right? Like, I, I am looking for the real, like, you know when the Spirit of the Lord is on something. I want to see the Spirit of the Lord sing through us. I want to see him speak through us. I want to see supernatural messages, even through manifestations. Like, I just, I want God to talk to us however he wants to talk. He can send geese into this room, 
We can get a song of the Lord. He can split things in two. He can do whatever he wants, right? I hope he doesn't break things, but he can if he wants to, right? Like the Lord speaking to us. Like I will sing in the spirit and I'll sing with my mind. I'll pray in the spirit. I'll pray with my mind also. Ephesians 6 says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times. How? In the spirit. Now in the Greek, the spirit is capitalized there. So we know we're talking about not with our own spirit. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And again, I, I feel like um, this burning room is, um, it, <clears throat> I, I just feel like we're accomplishing something here. Amen. And I feel um, like, I feel like this is going to, um, this is going to launch ministries in ways that we don't fully comprehend right now. I believe that we're paving a road for something coming in the future in this meeting. I just, we're, we're setting a foundation of Christ on things that we don't even know yet. We, we, don't know, we don't know what God is having us prepare right now. But I know that every revival in history was born in prayer. Every revival in history is born in prayer. And I'm not saying that to say... Since we're doing this, the world is going to come to our... That, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is every move of God starts this way. So we can expect that he's starting something. Amen. There's no reason, like, every spirit-filled church feels like they're going to be the one with revival. And at the same point, why not us? Why not here, right? Like, I don't, I don't have to um, be like anything else, but he is doing something, and I want that. He's starting something. He wouldn't have us pray just to pray. <clears throat> uh, Jude one twenty. I'm going to be talking about praying in tongues this Sunday, so don't, don't get bored of it, all right? Because our church needs more of it. Yeah, amen. Our church needs to pray in the Spirit more. I, I, we, want to be, we, want to, we want to be a church that's friendly to, like, lost folk. And we, want, we don't want to, you know, a part of our Sunday morning strategy is, wow, I feel the anointing really good. Hmm. Hallelujah. Part of our Sunday morning strategy is to have a clean service that you can bring lost people to. Right? We, th- there needs to be a place for that. Like if we're all laying on the ground acting weird for four hours, we're not necessarily serving the Lord with 12 of our best friends, you know? The more anointed those churches get, the, you know, the, the less big they get, I've noticed. Like people, like God, let me say it this way. I don't see God bringing lost people there. I don't see God saying, you know, this is a place I can really trust lost people to. Yep. Right? Like, let's just, let's just be real. I've been in those churches, and I thought I was on the cutting edge of what God was doing, and God never said, I can really trust them with my, you know, with these people I want to see become Christians. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And if we're not winning people, we've got to wonder, what are we doing? Amen. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, we're all saved, Right? Yeah, so it's not for us, Sunday morning primarily, right? Like, we're to get built up, but if we're not getting anybody saved, then we need to just pack it in and start going to victory and help them reach Boca, right? Like, right? I mean, bring our tithes there, just shut this whole thing down and help them reach Boca or Boca community or whoever's actually going to reach the city, right? Like, right? Like, God doesn't need more music, you know? Like, is that fair? And so, uh, so our Sunday morning is we want to get people saved and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. And part of that's praying in tongues. And you can teach on the gifts of the Spirit without being weird. Because cause they're, they are odd. They're supposed to be odd. It's supposed to take you to surrender your intellect to flow with the Spirit of God. He, he created it that way. Right? Like, all of a sudden, tongues got dignified. I don't know when that happened. Tongues aren't dignified. They're weird. And they're supposed to be weird. <laughs> Right? And as soon as you make tongues cool, he'll give you something else weird you've got to surrender your, your intellect to. God's like, oh, I got weird. Like, you just act like this is normal, and we'll just, you know, I can up the ante anytime you want. Right? It's supposed to be odd. It's not supposed to be unanointed. Tongue should be anointed. I don't want to go down that road right now. <clears throat> but we want to pray in tongues and actually be accomplishing something. I remember one time someone said, man, I come to your church, and everybody, they sound the same when they pray in tongues. He's like, doesn't sound like where I come from. I was like, because we're prophesying over here. That's why it sounds like, because we're actually doing something when we're praying in tongues. We're not just Shabbat Shabbat, you know, it's not a spiritual test over here. Like, we're actually accomplishing something 
with our prayer language. I'm, 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 I'm creating worlds right now. I don't know what you're doing. I'm creating worlds. I'm, 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 I'm causing the future. I'm, I'm, yes. Like you can walk through that portal I just opened with that tongue if you'd like. You can start it again. You can see it in the spirit right now. But that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, are you getting something out of this? Yeah. So Jude again tells him to pray in the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So what this tells me as he left this scripture on there is not only are we going to be accomplishing things in the spirit realm, in, in, in Boca Raton with our prayer and our intercession, but we're actually, those who will take part in it, get the first fruits and they get built up as well. Yes. We get built up as well. See, as, um, if we want to be ministers of God, if we want to be um, uh, you know, ministers of Christ or leaders in the church, we have to be aware of his presence in the church. Yeah. If we're going to minister the presence of Jesus, we have to be experiencing the presence of Jesus. We cannot take people somewhere we have not been. Right. And so as we are built up in the spirit, as we are built up in Christ, we then get to bring that presence to the people we're trying to minister to. It's not all intellect. We're supposed to actually bring Christ to people. We're bridging heaven and earth with our encounters. And so he tells us, hey, guess what? You're going to get built up as well. And I don't know about you, but I could use that. I could use the refreshing that I experienced. There's so many Friday nights, and I hope this doesn't hurt anybody's heart. There's so many Friday nights, I'm like, man, I would like to stay home tonight. I'm like, but I'm, but I'm going, but I'm going. And I get here, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I thought I was going to miss this. Oh, this is so refreshing. This is so refreshing. And uh, <clears throat> hallelujah. John 4. John <clears throat> 4, starting in verse 23. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. That's just 24. Do you have 23? But an hour, but an hour is coming. Thank you, honey. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for such people. The father seeks to be his worshipers. Then he says in verse 24. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit. And truth. Um, again, worshiping him in spirit and truth, there's a lot of teaching, a lot of. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a lot of time to teach on this, but if you, but if you, if you look at this, if you look at this scripture, and, and there's lots of people who got lots of things out of it, but Jesus reveals the Father, right? Uh, and the Holy Spirit enlivens true worship. To God, and Father is the object of our worship. And so, in this, you see the Trinity at work of the Father being the center of our worship, Jesus revealing the Father, and the Spirit enlivening our worship of God. And this is what God is looking for in worship, in, in intercession. He's looking for us to engage the Trinity in worship, to allow Holy Spirit to enliven our worship to reveal the Father and for the Father to be worshipped through Jesus whom he sent to point the way. Amen? Amen. And so we are to engage God in worship. And it's not just... Um, it's, it's not, when we get into a prophetic atmosphere and, or if you create one on your own and you begin to worship God and you begin to lean in to hear what the Spirit is saying, as, 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 as you begin to engage Holy Spirit in worship, then actually Jesus reveals the Father to a greater level. There's a, there's a prophetic atmosphere to it. There's a prophetic function in it. The Spirit of Christ is actually doing something in it. It's good if you just work yourself up, because <clears throat> if you're, there, is a, there is a sacrifice of praise still, right? There is a sacrifice of praise. So if nothing else, just do it, right? But <clears throat> there's something greater that when you look for Holy Spirit in the room and you join together with him in worshiping the Father. Like, I am jumping on your cloud, to worship the Father. 
And then you see Jesus alongside you, who is the one who reveals the Father, right? He is the one who leads us to the Father. And then, there is, like I said, there is this prophetic <clears throat> atmosphere and this prophetic unction that is released when we begin to worship, understanding that we're not doing this on our own. And it's not just me trying to worship away the day. And it's not me just fulfilling my biblical obligation. But I am actually partnering yeah. with God in worshiping God. It's a crazy concept, but we're invited into it, right? It's a crazy concept, but we're invited into it. And that's when the angels start to come around because they, they want to see that kind of worship, right? They want to see that kind of worship. And I like seeing them watch that kind of worship. If you don't ever see angels in worship, man, just start looking because you're in the atmosphere to see them. Amen. You are in the atmosphere to see them. And so this is what we want. We want to engage God in worship. And last but not least, in the band, if you guys can come up, i am used almost all of your time, but maybe we can sing another 10, 15 minutes. <clears throat> and this was really prescriptive for us. And I'm going to share this, and this is no indictment on anyone else. Because I've received my call does not diminish anybody else's call. Amen? Okay, so I want to read the scripture and what God was speaking to us. <clears throat> Matthew 6, 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew 6, 9. I think it's the next scripture up there. We'll put up Matthew 6, 9. Got it? Excellent. He says, I have something entirely different here. Hold on. Is that Matthew 6, 9? Hold on. Hold on one second. I have the wrong reference here. One second, please. Hmm? Is it 6, 7? 6, 7. I was close though, man. I was totally close. You got it, Josh? And when you're praying, don't use meaningless repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. And again, I'm going to say this without indictment. There is a uh, prophetic intercession singing style where a phrase is repeated for half an hour and it drives me crazy like you really like like I really felt like he heard it the first 40 or 50 times he said that like I really feel like we can move on to something else like we can actually engage our mind and say something and, the, and there's a um and there's a style where somebody prays and then people sing what he prayed. And again, it drives me crazy. Like, I think I just said that, right? Um, and I just really felt like, I don't know if this was me or the Lord, but either way, this is what we're doing. Uh, like, that's not what we're supposed to do. Like, we're not doing that. Like, don't do these vain repetitions. Don't say things over and over again thinking the more words you use that God will listen to that. Does that make sense? So we're to use our spirit and our mind. We're not supposed to check our mind at the door because we're going to function in the Holy Spirit. I just feel like the spirit-empowered mind is the greatest tool on the planet. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. And uh, there's people that are listening to this, and you're called to be a part of it. And as we begin to share this vision greater and as we begin to unpack it, um, God is going to challenge people to rearrange your schedule. Like, this is what I'm doing. You need to be a part of it. Um, and so this is our first uh, group of scriptures. In the next two weeks, I'm going to go over what we're going to pray and what we're going to expect. Uh, and so for now, I would like us to, um, <clears throat> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sing a little bit, and we're going to worship, and we're going to experiment with praying in, this, in the Spirit. In the Spirit. Not like just 
praying with tongues in the spirit. And we as a, as a, as a group, we as a body, we have to learn how to get in the spirit so we can pray in the spirit. Amen. We have to be in the spirit to pray in the spirit. Amen. Stand up. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Ha, shabaka. Now, Kelly, I'm, I'm expecting you. I'm expecting you. Um, I expect, I'm expecting you. Uh, the Holy Spirit's going to speak through you in, in, in uh, intercession. I believe you're going you're gonna to pave a road with that. And uh, you may get it wrong a couple times. But that's what happens. That's what happens. That's some, sometimes that's how it bees. That's how we learn. That's how we learn. Amen. And, and for you out there, uh, if you get a spiritual song, not necessarily everybody has to hear it. Right? Just because you get a spiritual song doesn't mean it has to be on the microphone. Right? Like, are you accomplishing more on the microphone than not on the microphone? Is it more important? No. No. We're, we're looking to train up people who can yield the Holy Spirit. And uh, I believe the songs that are supposed to be on the microphone are the people with microphones. And so I'm expecting that, you know, your songs aren't going to be any less important. My songs aren't going to be any less important. Uh, but we need to hear what God is speaking to our house. And we need to give him a microphone. Amen. We've given our soul lots of, amen, yeah, go on, give it up. We've given our soul lots of microphone. It's time to give Holy Spirit a microphone into our house. Shakaraba. Shakaraba.